Well, hello. This is Jan from the Fuzzy Duckling, and I'm back with you with part two of drawing our rainbow trout. Now, in our last video, which you will want to watch before you do this one, we learned step by step how to draw this trout. And this in itself is a very good drawing. You could just stop at this point if you wish. But if you'd like to make it look a little more finished, we can add some shading to this little guy. And it really, well, it just makes a big difference in your picture looking finished. So today we're going to learn how to do this shading. And it really is easy. Before I forget it, underneath this video there will be a uh, PDF that you can download and print that shows you the steps on how to draw this if you don't want to go online to watch the draw with me version of it. Alright, I guess this is what we're aiming for. This is what we have. This is the one we drew in the last video. And so, you notice the last thing we did was draw these spots on the fish and we made fairly dark spots in fact this is about as dark as these pencils will go we're not using a nice art pencil we're using a pencil that just about everybody has in the house so that you don't have to run out and buy things but if you do have some art pencils those are wonderful and we may need to do a video on art pencils one of these days so we want to shade in some areas. We don't want to be as dark as our spots. We don't want to cover those spots up. We want to be fairly light. In fact, I'll call this a feather touch. And we want to do an area around the edges of the body part of our fish. Now, do you see how that is not near as dark as the spots are? But it doesn't totally cover up these scale lines either. And we're just going to do that all the way around here and around here, just very lightly shade this in. Now, do it as smooth as you can, but we're also going to smooth this out with a blending stick before we're done with this which will help make it look smoother too so we're going to do this all the way around his body okay we have that shaded around you see that already gives it some definition it makes it look like it's a rounded fish, just not like a flat fish that has no shape to it. Now, we're going to take our blending stick, or you can use a piece of tissue wrapped around your finger. I would suggest, though, that you get you some of these sticks. They usually come with, I don't know, about a dozen in a package, or you can get packages with different sizes, and they're not expensive. And they're really good with pencil work. We're going to take that blending stick and we're going to smooth out the sections we just drew in. Now look at this. You see how that smoothed that out? Now we're going to come with it and kind of draw it down and we'll get our shadow look in that fashion. It gives it a gradient that gets lighter and lighter as it goes around the roundness of your fish. Do you see that? Now these are techniques if you want to do drawing with pencils that you'll use a lot. It's a very powerful technique but very easy. It spreads your color around quite a bit. Maybe I shouldn't say color. It is a great color though, isn't it? <laughs> mm. 
There we go. Look at how that shaped our fishy right up. Now, I also want just a little bit of color through here. Not a lot. So I'm going to lightly just rub over that with the flat side of my blending stick. And it will pull just a little bit of graphite up to give it a light, light, light gray color. There we have the body of our fish all blended. Now let's do his head. We want to shade along here, along the eye, outside edge of his mouth, down and around and into there. So we'll try to kind of give some definition to this face on our fish. In fact, I said clear around here, but let's stop right here at this line. There we go. And then come down here and get his lower jaw shadowed. Just like that. Again, if you have drawing pencils, you can get a lot darker shadowing and blending in with a drawing pencil. Now we're going to do the same thing with this. We're going to blend it. And then we're going to kind of pull it into his head. Soften those lines up a little bit. It's almost like painting with your pencil lines. There we go. Now, let's come along and blend around the inner lines that make up his lip here. Make sure you're still in camera here. I'm going to go a little darker here so these lines stand out a little more. And then come along, this one, follow it down along his lower lip or jaw here. And keep it a little darker again so that it sets his mouth off. There we go. Now, one thing I do like about these teeny tiny blending sticks is you can get into these little spots much easier with these than you can with a piece of tissue paper. You might even want to wrap that piece of tissue paper around uh, oh maybe your pencil to get a smaller smaller end to blend with. I'm also going to blend this inside of the mouth while I'm here. Now, again, I'm going to pull a little of this into my lip there just to give it a little bit of gray fishy color. So come around here just like that. There we go. Now, I want to blend just a little bit, very lightly. And it can be hard to do it as light as you want a blended circle around this eye because the eyes kind of come out a little bit and cast a little bit of shadow and it's actually actually hard with this pencil to blend light enough but we can do it okay. see how I had that circle of shading right around the eye then I'm going to come along with my blending stick. I'm calling this a blending stick. Many people call them blending stumps. I guess it does look kind of like some kind of a stump. To me it is just a stick that I blend with. 
I can kind of just shade this out a little bit. Okay, we're just about done with that head. That's shade along the insides of these gill shapes here. So that those are set off and you can see them plainly. Let's go ahead and do this one while we're doing that. Really, it's fairly quick to do your blending and your shadowing. But it really sets your picture off as being a much more finished piece of artwork. Now I think you probably know the next step is to take our blending stick again and blend those spots around and then pull the color in just a bit. I think this just works magic to your picture. Once you've done this to one of your pencil pictures, you always want to have one of these blending sticks on hand. Now, I think the only thing I want to do yet with this head is perhaps just add a little bit of shadowing or shading in front of these two lines. Very lightly, not a lot. Take your time doing this because if you make too harsh of a mark, it will be hard to blend it and shadow it in the way you want to. Okay, blending stick. We'll pull that out just a little bit to blend it in with the rest of the fishy. Over here, blending stick. There we go. There's the head. There's the body. We just need to do the fins and the tail. Now, again, we're going to shade around the inside edges. Not too dark. Don't want to cover up our dots. Those dots usually take long enough to draw. We don't want to cover them up. Let's see. I'll be sure I'm here where you can see what I'm doing. Go around all the inside edges. Now, on these lines that we put inside our fins, I'm going to start at the bottom of these and darken them up a little bit with shading up on a little bit of shading on each side of those. Not a lot. We want to have our light spots in between every one of those lines. And then I want this next to the body to be fairly dark. So I'm going to go over this again and darken that up a little bit. All right, ready for my blending stick? Here we go. We'll pull it lightly down. There's our fin. Now, I've lost some of my definition here between the fin and the body, and I want to go back in and add that with my pencil. There we go. Let's do this back little funny looking fin here. All we need to do is shade around the edges. little darker shading here along the backbone. 
blending stick. Okay, and then we need to bring in the definition a little bit again there between those lines of um, the fin and the body. There we go. Now we're going to do all three of these the same way. And uh, tell you what I think on this, I am going to uh, cut some of this out so you don't have to sit there and watch it all. But again, shade around all of the edge, especially dark right next to the body. Thicken the lines that go through the fin and then blend it. Okay, just finishing up on the last fin here, we're doing our shading around the inner edges. We're going to add some darker shading along each one of these fin lines. And use our blending stick. All right, all we have left now is the tail. Get over here on this tail. Now, the tail is quite a bit darker through here where the shadows fall. So I'm going to shade through this area fairly dark. That may cover up some of my lines, but that's all right, because this is really shadowed area. Actually, though, my lines are still standing there very nicely. As dark as I can get it. Another place for an art pencil is nice because you can get it darker, but this will be fine. Now we're going to shade a little bit lighter up around the inside of the tail shape. Do you notice that as your pencil point gets worn, it's actually a little easier to shade smoothly? When you have a very sharp point, it's harder to get smooth shading in. So it's okay to have your pencil a little dull for this part of the drawing. Alright, we want to emphasize these lines will make them darker and fatter. All right, blending stick time. I'd like this just a tiny bit darker through here, so I'm going to add a little bit more to make that tail really stand out. And I believe we're finished, except if you want to put the pink rainbow line in. And if you want to do that, you'll need a pink colored pencil. I'm using a Prismacolor called Carmen Red. But for this, you can use any colored pencils you have, and one that's a pink color or a light red. And just use small circles with a feather touch. And just lay in some pink color 
along this middle line that you have drawn there. And again, this is why these are called rainbow trap. Now our pencil gray isn't exactly the color of the fish, it's close. If you were to paint this or actually color it lifelike, you would probably do more of a, have a little greenish goldy color to it, which would be very pretty. And you know, if you have those colors in your colored pencils, you could come along and add that over this shading in this picture. Be very pretty. There you go. You have finished your rainbow trout. Isn't he a cute fishy? And I would love to see some of your artwork when you get it finished. If you would like to post it up on our Facebook page. And then, with your permission, I would like to put that right on our page on our website. To show off the work of you wonderful artists out there. Well, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this project. And there's more projects coming this month. And I hope you'll be back to watch those. So, bye-bye for now.